If you're designing a steel structure and you want to keep your client happy, think about the next factor, the next topic we're going to be looking at, because we're going to be discussing the section factor now. And this is a huge impact on the design of steel buildings, because it influences the rate that structures heat up, and steel beams, steel columns, how much energy enters them, and then how hot do they get. And if you think about the section factor from the beginning of your design, you may actually come with an overall uh, cheaper structure, all in all. Because for instance, here we've got an I-beam, H-beam, whatever it is, could be a channel, anything. And once a fire is burning around it, it's going to absorb energy from all its exposed surfaces. So if there's no passive protection, it'll be that pink line there all around, just the exact perimeter of the whole section. And we normally refer to that as the heated perimeter over area. The heated perimeter being the total outline, and then the area being the cross-section of the I-beam, H-beam channel, whatever it is. Other codes refer to it in different ways. The Eurocode, for instance, refers to it as the area of the member over volume. These two concepts are identical, except that this uses a per meter length. So it would be one meter, in or <coughs> one meter deep in and out of the page. And so if it's a uniform cross-section, it'll be identical. You'll get the exact same result. However, if, for instance, this is a cellular beam with holes in, or it's a tapered beam where there's a change in cross-section over the length, then these two values will be different. And we can try and manipulate, though, this value, the heated perimeter, and how, what our cross-section is. Because as this value, as our heated perimeter increases, for a constant air, our section will heat up faster. So we want as small a heated perimeter as possible um, to make our design more effective. Now, this does conflict with structural design a bit because normally in a structural design, you want wider members for lateral buckling or lateral torsional buckling or whatever it is. So they, you would have to look at this from the start. How do we optimize our member? But just to remember, if you've got a, a steel section, Sometimes, in some cases, the cost of the paint or the boards, or especially the intramescent paints around, may be more than the steel. So it really does make sense to look at this from the start. But now, let's say we do design our beam. It's unprotected. We find it doesn't work. These factors are too high. Then we start applying passive protection. Either we can do contour passive protection, as per the pink line, or we could do a box passive protection all the way around it. And now the amount of energy entering the sample has reduced because the perimeter is smaller. We don't have the full contour inside, but we take the dimensions right on the edge of the steel all around. So we use the contour all the way around, and this would then be the heated perimeter now. But we often then will refer to this as a protected area over volume. And that'll give us then the new HP over AM over V different factors we would, would use. But furthermore, if this steel beam is part of a structure and has a concrete slab on top, no energy can enter the section from where the slab is. It provides a useful insulator. And then if we further add on, for instance, some vermiculite boards or gypsum boards all the way around, we can then protect our beam even more. And now our heated perimeter is only this distance along the bottom and up the sides. So on this hand, this will heat up the fastest, and on the other hand, this will be the slowest. And we can manipulate this to try to get a less or more efficient design and a less or more efficient uh, structure at the end of the day. And once you've got these numbers, they initially, when you look at them, they may not be intuitively easy to understand. For instance, you get a, a value of 200 meters to the negative one. And you can't just look at that and see exactly what that means. But one useful way to think about it is if you just take the inverse of it, like so. Because, for instance, 200 meters to the negative 1, the inverse of that is 5 millimeters. And that actually is an effective thickness. And it's a lot easier way to get it into your head that if this, for instance, this beam has an HP of 200 meters to the negative 1, that means on average, the heat has to penetrate about five millimeters into the section. So on average, it's the same as saying this is a 10 millimeter thick plate with fire from both sides. So it's often not a bad thing just to double check your calcs by using that. And you can use the effective thickness to see a sort of practical conceptual way of visualizing what you've just calculated. And as I mentioned, use this to try to get an understanding and use this to try optimize your passive protection cost. And you'll quickly see when you start playing with these calcs, if you have a very slender members, especially purlins and uh, long sections with thin webs. 
they heat up so fast you sometimes cannot even protect them at one hour or two hours. But a short squat section, you can get away with much less passive protection. But once again, you'll have to balance the ambient temperature design with the fire design to get an overall optimal solution. So that covers then the section factor design. Thank you.